Welcome. In this video lecture, I am going to talk about how we can solve the dynamic lot sizing problem using part period balancing heuristic. So the idea behind the part period balancing heuristic is we are trying to balancing the order cost as well as the holding cost over the order horizon. So order horizon means whether we are going to order for the first time period at the start of that month or we are going to give the order for the consecutive two months at the start of the month one or uh, we are considering the order horizon of month three and so on. So uh, for that, we need to calculate the holding cost for that order horizon, okay, as well as the uh, order cost. So first of all, let's see if we have a certain order horizon, how we can calculate the holding cost, okay? So the idea behind this calculation of the holding cost are the two. One is that you can use the holding uh, or the inventory at the end of that time period. Okay, and how much inventory we have at the end of that time period multiply with the holding cost per unit. Another idea which we can we are using that the average inventory we have on the order horizon. Okay, so how you can calculate that one? Let's say if I have the order horizon of three months. Okay, we have month one, month two, month three. Okay, so the demand of month one is D1, D2, as well as D3. So if I am placing the order at the start of month one and I am considering the order horizon of month three, okay, so I want to know what would be the average uh, inventory we have. So that is going to be D1 plus D2 plus D3 because we are uh, uh, give ordering the quantity at the start of month one to fulfill the demand of all the order horizon. Okay, plus, okay, so because we are going to calculate the average inventory uh, in for every particular time period, that means at the end of month one, so we have fulfilled the demand of month one. So that means at the start of month two, we have the inventory of D2 plus D3. Okay, D2 plus D3. And in order to calculate the average inventory for the month one, that is going to be divided by two. Okay, so plus. Then at the start of month one, what would be the average inventory? That is again at the start of month, we have the quantity of D2 plus D3. Okay, and then uh, we have at the end of month two, we have only the leftover is equal to the quantity D3. That would be the average inventory for time period two. Then for the time period three, we have ordered the quantity is equal to D3 divided by two. Okay, so that is the average inventory we have in the period of time three. Okay, so if you can see this entire series over here, you can see that the D1 comes one time, D2 comes one, two, three times, whereas d3 comes five times okay one two three four five similarly if we have the order horizon is equal to four then you will see that the d4 will become at this uh, the quantity would be equal to seven if we have the order horizon five then the d5 will become at nine times and so on so this is the series or you can say the arithmetic series so i can write down this arithmetic series is equal to 2t minus 1 okay and if i sum it up from t1 to capital t so this is going to be represent how many number of time period you are considering would be equal to the order horizon whether it is equal to three time period or a two time period or a five time period so that's why in order to calculate the average we are going to divide this by two and we need to multiply by the dt that is the demand in that time period okay so in order to so basically with the help of this um, you can say expression we are calculating the average inventory for that order horizon of that time period okay so once we get the average inventory of that order horizon or you can say for that particular time period multiply by the average holding cost uh, per unit per time period so with the help of this one we would be able to get the holding cost right 
and then once we have calculated the holding cost and we have the order cost so whenever we are going to place there will be the order cost so the iteration is going to be continue until the holding cost is less than the order cost but we are going to stop the iteration when the holding cost is greater than the order cost okay so once the holding cost is greater than the order cost we are going to calculate the closeness ratio factor okay so the closeness factor uh, which is cr that is going to be the modulus of the difference between the order cost and the carrying cost okay so the closer the uh, smaller the closeness ratio that would be our order horizon and we are going to give the order quantity is equal to up till that order horizon which would be equal to the sum of the demand of till that time period so let's see the example and with that on that example we will apply this heuristic and we will get the clear understanding so so iteration one so first of all the problem i am considering is this is the monthly demand and the order cost we have whenever we are, we are going to place the order is 80 dollar and the holding cost we have that is equal to 1.75 dollar per unit per time period okay and this is the monthly demand so first of all what we need to calculate we need to calculate the holding cost for the uh, supposed order horizon so supposing i am considering the order horizon equal to time period one so that means at the start of month one which is the january we are going to place the order and how much we are going to order the quantity in order to meet the demand that would be equal to the demand of january okay so in order to calculate the holding cost for this time period we are going to say again we are applying this particular formula which is basically the average inventory because the order horizon is one so you can say that two into t into one so two minus one is equal to one by two so one multiplied by d1 is 36 so basically 36 by 2 multiplied by 1.75 we will get the carrying cost so in simple we are saying we can say that 36 by 2 multiplied by carrying cost per unit okay because we are placing the order at the start of january okay so we have to bear the order cost now uh, we will continue this iteration and we will set the order horizon for two months so which means now we have the order horizon of two months instead of one so that means at the start of january we are going to place the order which would be equal to the demand of january and february so that means at the start of january we have an order cost of 80 dollar and how much we are going to place the order at the start of january which would be equal to 36 plus 90 is going to be 36 or uh, 96 okay so in order to calculate the carrying cost again we need to calculate the average inventory which is going to be um, uh, using this particular formula which is going to be uh, 2t minus 1 divided into dt divided by 2 and then sum so if we apply this one so that means 2 into uh, 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 that t is equal to 1 so 1 by 2 into d1 so that means 1 by 2 into d2 is equal to this one and then if we put because the order riser is 2 so t is equal to 2 so that is 4 minus 1 which is 3 by 2 into d2 so what is d2 which is 60 by 2 and then we will multiply with 1.75 this is the holding cost if we are considering the order horizon is equal to which mean if we place the order at the start of the january in order to meet the demand of january as well as february so as you can see that the order cost is uh, smaller than the carrying cost which means uh, if uh, remember that if the order cost is greater than the carrying cost we will continue the iteration but if the order cost is smaller than the carrying cost we will stop the iteration okay and then we will calculate the closeness factor so how we can calculate that is modulus uh, first of all we are calculating when the order horizon is equal to 1 so this is 80 minus 31.5 with the modulus we are getting the closeness factor 48.5 when we have the order horizon is equal to 2 which means we are ordering at the start of january in order to meet the demand of january and february that is 80 minus 189 okay we are getting this one 
smaller value is equal to this one. So that means the order horizon must be equal to one as per the heuristic of part period balancing. And at the start of January, how much quantity we should order? We should order equal to 36, which is basically equal to the demand of the January. Now we will jump to the iteration number two, okay? So in a iteration number two, as we have seen that in the iteration one, we have meet the demand of January. And till now, uh, the as per the heuristic, we have decided that in order to meet the demand of January, we should order play uh, order at the start of January equal to 36. And then we have to uh, basically bear the total cost equal to this one, which is 80 plus 31.5. Now, in iteration number two, we are at the start of February. So, first of all, we are considering the order horizon is equal to one. So, that means our order horizon is only the February. So, at the start of February, we are going to place the order equal to what? Equal to the demand of February. So, there is an order cost. When the order horizon is equal to one, so we will get the average inventory is going to be half of this, which is 60 by 2 multiplied by 1.75. As we can see that the order cost is greater than this one. So, so we will continue this iteration by considering the order horizon is equal to two months instead of the one month. Now, which means we are going to place the order at the start of February in order to meet the demand of February and March, which means how much quantity we should order 60 plus 85, which is equal to 170, 145 when we are going to place the order at the start of February, we will bear $80 in order to calculate the average inventory. Again, I'm applying this formula in order to get the average inventory. So this is time period one because now we are considering from the start of February. Okay, so for one, this is going to be 60 by two plus when the time period two, that is going to be three into 85. Okay, divided by two multiplied by this. So this is the carrying cost. Again, now the order cost is less than this one. We will stop the iteration or you can say the holding cost is greater than the order cost. So we will stop the iteration. Again, we will calculate the closeness ratio. So the order cost minus uh, closing uh, carrying cost is equal to this one. Order cost minus carrying cost with the modulus is this one. So the smaller closeness ratio for the order rise is equal to one, which means again, in the February, so we should place the order at the start of February in order to meet the demand of February. Okay. Now, uh, in the iteration number three, now we are at the start of March. Okay. So again, uh, we are considering order horizon equal to one. So we are going to place the order equal to 85. Okay. Uh, in order to meet the demand of March. So again, we will bear the cost of $80 in order to place the order. Average inventory is going to be 85 by 2 multiplied by per unit cost. So this is the carrying cost because the carrying cost is smaller than. So we will continue the iteration and we are going to consider the two time period order horizon. Okay, so that means at the start of March, we are going to place the order would be equal to the sum of these two months demand, which is 96 and we will bear 80. In order to calculate the average uh, inventory, so what we will do, again, we are going to apply this particular formula to calculate the average inventory per time period, which is basically 85 by two plus three into 11 by two, okay? Multiply by per unit carrying cost per time period. So this is this one. So again, the carrying cost is greater than the order cost. We will stop the iteration and we will calculate the closeness ratio. So when we consider order horizon equal to one, so we have the closeness ratio is this one. When the order horizon we have considered is two, the closeness ratio is this one. So which mean again, the closeness ratio for the order horizon one is smaller, okay? So we are going to place the order at the start of March equal to 85. Now we will jump to iteration number four and we will start from the month April because till now we have meet the demand of uh, January, February, and in the, in the last, we have March. So in the start of April, again, we are going to place the order equal to the demand of April because we are considering in the initially order, order rise is equal to one. So the order is equal to 80. The average carrying cost would be equal to, again, using the same formula is 9.63. 
because the carrying cost is smaller than so we will continue the iteration again we will considering the order rises equal to 2 so that is april and may so that means at the start of april we are going to place the order equal to the sum of these two uh, months demand which is 50 so the order cost is going to be 80 because we are placing the order at the start of april once so the average carrying cost is going to be 1.75 multiplied by the average inventory for in this in these two time periods so that is 112 again the carrying cost is more than this one we will stop the iteration and we will calculate the closeness ratio so if we calculate the closeness ratio with the help of this one okay that is going to be 70 point this one then 80 minus 112 is this one so this one is a smaller smaller so in our iteration 2 it says that in order to meet the demand of april and may so we should place the order at the start of april how much that should be equal to the sum of these two months demand which is 50 okay and based on this we would be able to bear the smaller total cost which is going to be 80 plus uh, 112 okay so now we will move to the month of june okay so if we again start of june so we are going to place which is 80 okay in order to calculate the holding cost that is only month one so the average inventory is 75 by 2 into 1.75 so this is the carrying cost so if we summarize the solution of part period balancing so as we have seen in our iteration one when we were considering the january so it says at the start of january we should place the order of 36 so we will bear the order cost and carrying cost for that month and this is going to be the total inventory cost which is the sum of these two then at the start of february we must place the order equal to the demand of february and then we are going to place uh, bear this cost okay and at the start of march we should place the order equal to the uh, demand of march but at the start of april we should place the order of the sum of demand of april and may okay and we will be able to get this total cost then at the start of june we should place the order equal to the demand of june so if we sum the order cost so this is basically the total order cost this is the total carrying cost and by summing this one we would be able to get the um, total cost based on part per period balancing now you can compare this total cost answer with the lot for lot and you will see that the total cost uh of uh, with the solution of part period balancing is smaller than the lot for lot so that mean you can say that this heuristic is better compared to the lot for lot okay so see you in the next video in which we will discuss silver meal heuristic thank you so much